In the wake of the recent mass shootings in uh, Tucson, Arizona, Aurora, Colorado, Newtown, Connecticut, President Obama and gun control advocates called for a ban on assault weapons. But is it really the guns that are the problem? Mental health professionals have said that in all these cases, the shooters were on some kind of prescription medication. My next guest says it just might be the pills that are the problem. Joining me now is psychiatrist and author of Medication Madness, the role of psychiatric drugs in cases of violence, suicide, and crime, Dr. Peter Bregan. And Dr. I, um, I, I love your message, and that's why I asked you to come on the show, because I think you have touched on something that uh, is fascinating to me, is the fact that there are these psychotic drugs out there, and, and we'll give the audience your opinion about them. I've heard you talk about this before. Well, there's no doubt that psychiatric drugs can cause violence, and the uh, most widely used ones, including uh, particularly the antidepressants, the newer ones like Prozac and uh, Paxil and Celexa, and also the benzodiazepines, the tranquilizers like Xanax and Clonopin, and then also the stimulant drugs we give to children. All of them have a significant association with violence. If you take a look at all the reports to the FDA uh, about uh, drug violence, uh, all the drugs that we use, uh, most of them, the vast majority, have no association with violence. And then those three groups I just mentioned, the psychiatric drugs, have many, many more times uh, the number of uh, reports of violence. So. Look it's uh, it's All clearly right, but, established but but you have somebody who comes <clears throat> to you and they and th they are mentally ill what do you do because m a lot of doctors will just you know get out the old prescription pad and write a write a prescription uh, i've heard you talk about the fact that you've been doing this for decades and that you have cured a lot of mental illnesses with zero drugs well, I don't think in terms of curing mental illnesses, Tom, as much as I think of helping people overcome their problems, helping people overcome their anguish, their pain, their anger, their suffering. And in my experience, and I think this is the absolute truth, what really helps people is a good, solid, caring relationship with somebody. And a therapist or psychiatrist, I'm a psychiatrist, who says, in effect, you can take charge of your life. You can be responsible for your life. You can learn how to handle your emotions. You can learn to live by better values. But that's not the current approach in psychiatry. You'll hear nothing in psychiatry about taking charge of your life, taking responsibility, or living by values. Instead, psychiatry turns people into machines and says uh, you have a biochemical imbalance, which is untrue. We've got a drug that can cure the biochemical imbalance, which is untrue. And those things make people feel more helpless and more out of control. So I, I think we need to get back to good, solid human relationship as a way of helping people. Are, are, are you uh, persona non gratis at the psychiatric association meetings? Well, I suppose I might even be subject to violence since we're talking about that. <laughs> yes, psychiatry is just a handmaiden now of the pharmaceutical industry. If you go to one of the big psychiatric meetings, it's going to a drug company carnival. They pay for everything. Psychiatry, the journals, our journals are paid for by the drug companies. Our meetings are paid for by the drug companies. And we make a lot of money by doing 10-minute med checks. Uh, you do a lot more uh, financially that way than by sitting and talking with somebody. Psychiatry has lost its way. And I do think that the shootings really uh, very much involve psychiatric drugs. I was an expert in cases surrounding uh, Eric Harris from Columbine. I got to really look at his medical records. And, and you can see him deteriorating while taking an antidepressant, Luvox, and he had it in his bloodstream when he committed the violence. Well, beyond the, the, the common thread of, uh, you know, a lot of people say, well, these shootings, uh, the guns have been the common thread. You're talking about, yeah, but there's also psych psychotic drugs are a common thread. I have a, a, a man I used to work with, sadly. I mean, father of the year, great guy, smart guy, but I didn't know he suffered from depression. They changed the medication on him. He went home and he stabbed to death his two little daughters. And he says to this day, he's in prison in, in North Carolina, he says it was because of the fact that the drugs made him do it. I, I never heard that I argument actually, before, but that seems yeah. to be yours. 
Oh, well, there's no question about it. I've been involved in a, a case where a man on his second day of uh, Paxil drowned his two children in a bathtub and drowned himself. There's a lot of cases like this. A woman who murdered one of her children and tried to murder another one on uh, Zoloft, so th this, uh, which is an antidepressant. So this, th th there's no lack of, of cases about this, and I've looked at them in depth in Medication Madness, Tom. I have 50 cases where I've seen the medical records and interviewed people if they were alive, interviewed families uh, where suicide and violence was a major theme. So yeah. th these are very yeah. serious problems. Well, I'm, I'm just I glad you're, you're talking out about it. I'm glad you're speaking out about this. I wanted to give you the forum here uh, to do it on this program, too, because I think your message is, is uh, worth listening to, and a lot of people don't hear it. So, Dr. Bregan, Dr. Peter Bregan, uh, thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Thank you, Tom. You thank bet. you.